EGMAT platform, you guys have spent considerable amount of time in putting together pre GMAT steps in terms of even before you get into study. And so, for instance, verbal, you have a foundation course, but even before you get into a foundation course in verbal, you guys have given very clear timelines, expectations, how the preparation should be done, how it should be structured, how you should approach it. You know, things like, you know, spend three days, let's say if you spend three days on, on number of properties, uh, then make sure that, you know, you finish your uh, on the platform, the tutorials and the, the lessons you have, uh, then go to Scholarium, uh, test yourself there, come back, practice a bit more, uh, go back and then try. And I really, I think, you know, so these are the kind of things you guys said, I completely ignored all of that. You know, overconfidence, I think. So I went ahead and, you know, did all the lessons, uh, the usual, you know, uh, it, it wasn't well thought through. And yes, my something, you know, uh, was working full time. So I was trying to fit in, was confident that, you know, this is, this is like, because I am in investment banking for last 10 years. So I was a little maybe cocksure about the fact that, you know, I can do this. So I approached it that way. And it bombed. It bombed badly. Uh, I finished the tutorial. I did not really use Scholarium to great extent. I I cheated on the Scholarium by sort of, you know, breaking the test and going back and doing a lot of those stuff which gives you false idea of what your ability is. to the T every strategy and every uh, uh, the, the suggestions given by your platform mm-hmm. and I restricted myself to EGMAT mm-hmm. uh, and then after EGMAT on GMAT club which which is a plus with your platform because you guys give it that as a combined option so it's not something you have to go so my trust on your platform was intact and it was a bit more extra after I wrote the first exam because when I went and wrote the exam I realized that lot of what came is exactly what you was there in Scholarium which I completely ignored. So if I had the ability, if I, if I had genuinely used Scholarium in the way it's supposed to be, then if I had shown a 90% ability in any of the sections, it pretty much would have reflected and that's what happened the second time. I'm sure you have access to my Yeah, I, I actually I was looking at it like a minute before the call, yes. So, in some places you will see that yes, there are cases where I have tanked suddenly after doing you know 93 or in, in, in less than number of properties and third time I wrote it went down to 6 but it never went down to 30 and you know, all except maybe in, in geometry I guess. Uh, but all other ways you will see that I this time around I did that correctly. So I focused one, I did the course, uh, again did the lessons for concept building. Uh, it didn't take me that long a time the second attempt because I had already done those lessons and tips were there. <coughs> but I spent considerable and a structured amount on Scholarium. And after having gotten confidence on Scholarium, where I could see that at least on the topics where I... So I chose to focus on number properties, algebra, uh, word problems, geometry, and then PNC in that order as far as quant was concerned. Verbal the first time around, one more thing I which I forgot uh, to mention uh, so, was that I did take one suggestion that you guys gave was to focus on ESR report. So the first test which I gave, though I cancelled the score but I purchased the ESR report and I went through it properly. I used for how GMAT has your, your platform basically has explained how to uh, uh, decipher it. So I did that. And I identified, so I could see, like for instance, in quant, it was average over over this thing. It's not like I wasn't good in arithmetic and algebra or one of them. It was average. It showed exactly what my preparation was. In verbal, however, the first time, even with 36, reading comprehension, even during preparation, was good. That's something that's natural to me, and also that I did. So I was about 80 percentile the first time around in RC. Uh, SC, I was 80 percentile. Where I tanked the first time around was in CR uh, and exactly again same thing. I completely did not had the patience to go through what your training was showing on EGMAT. I ignored that in CR I was like at 50 percentile. So the second time around I went through all of these. I went through that. So you probably got the new CR course too then? 
exactly yeah and the cr this time around was very different also the way it's structured cr exactly uh, i think it's uh, oh yeah Oh, now that you mentioned it, yes, I, the CR this time was really helpful because it was not that frustrating to go through those lessons, <laughs> my weaker section. So I think uh, that showed in my uh, it shows in my 40 now because RC and all I went up to almost 90 percentile and I had lot more RC questions this time around second attempt. Uh, SC I remained at same I think, but CR improved considerably up to 70 or something. Okay. I understood what I had an idea of what what is it that exam is testing okay. and I then went back to your platform and I realized first time around I was getting a little frustrated with the fact that you had a lot of lot of questions seemed on 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 spallerium and otherwise on test and all mm. like they do not belong in GMAT kind of thing but what I realized after writing the exam was that those questions actually were preparing you more for the language of the question more for your ability to read something and quickly you know uh, form understand what the main point is what the main question of the point is right so you are not rereading a question and getting confused and writing down so none of that happened this time because i was well prepared in i had an idea from scholarium that what so i didn't take it personally in scholarium for instance if i was not going above 65 70 percent in random test i was taking mm -hmm. what i was noticing was that i have to use this to build my time skills which was very important, which I struggled the first time around. Uh, so that helped me a lot because I focused on my time skills. Uh, two, I focused on on getting comfortable with the language of what it is and not worrying too much about because it's not really, you know, you're not solved doing calculus or it, those are not what I, they are trying to write. Yes. So I, yeah, I learned that and I, as I said, this time around I reread and read everything that uh, the introduction section of the platform says mm -hmm. and I stuck with it. So that helped me and I also prioritized, I did not focus too much on the probability PNC. I did it in a very school, uh, at a very school level. Mm -hmm. I did not really delve too much into complex problems. I made up my mind that let me focus. Uh, I focused on number properties and algebra okay. and spent after that considerable amount of time after I almost exhausted Scalvanium I went to GMAT club and then I spent good 15 days at least there uh, and almost to, you know 60-70% of their question bank in point oh, wow. I okay. taking tests and quizzes and quizzes and quizzes uh, yeah I did that mm -hmm.